Hello friends, I am Dr. Vijay Prakash and today I will be telling you about design consideration in class 3 and class 4 situation. Now, what is the class 3 situation? Kennedy's class 3 is a uh, edential space which is bounded by teeth both anterior and posterior to it. Like you can see here in the figure, you have this edential space which is bounded by teeth on both the sides. This is actually what you see in the figure is class 3 modification 1. Now, when we talk about design consideration, first thing is your direct retainers. As this is a uh, edential space which is bounded by teeth both anterior and posterior to it, the direct retainers, uh, the especially the retentive undercut of uh, the teeth are not that critical, crucial here because uh, since the stresses are borne along the long axis of the teeth and you have uh, a partial denture which is supported by teeth on both the sides and that is the reason uh, your retentive undercut uh, it is not that dependent on retention for the retentive undercuts another thing is your class should be positioned in a quadrilateral configuration uh, as you can see you are having your class assembly on both the sides of your uh, um, on the both the sides of your partial denture. Similarly, if you are having a modification space, again you are having the uh, direct retainers on both the sides. Another thing is, if you are not having a modification space, suppose you have a tooth here and it is just a classic situation here, still you should give a quadrilateral configuration so that you can give a direct retainer as far, as far posterior as possible and as far anterior as possible and you retain this configuration because this is much better in distribution of forces. Another thing is uh, if the restoration required to be corrected in the tooth contours the wax pattern must be shaped on the surveyor itself. So any modification which you want to do you can do that uh, on the surveyor itself before uh, even casting the partial denture. Another thing is your bracing arm should be rigid and the rest should be prepared next to the edential space whenever possible. Another thing is your rest seat should be prepared at uh, your uh, should be prepared so that the rest do not move. Now there is a difference between the rest seat preparation in this case and in distal extension case. In a distal extension partial dentures you are giving a rest seat which was uh, like a ball and socket uh, uh, joint and here uh, so that you provided play there but here you need to have a proper rest seat so that the lifting is not there of the rest and the rest should be acute angle and uh, they should be directing towards the center of the tooth so that uh, the forces which are transmitted are transmitted along the long axis of the tooth. Rest should be used to support the major connector and the lingual plating uh, if you are talking about the mandibular major connector. Indirect retention in a class 3 situation is not required actually and uh, your major connector they should be rigid that is the first requirement and your major connector should not impinge the gingival tissues another thing and you can derive a support from the hard palate if you are having a longer edential span another thing is the extension of the major connector onto the lingual surface of the tooth may be uh, taken into consideration if your uh, teeth are not periodontally sound and your edential span is uh, bigger so in those cases they can provide increased rigidity, they can distribute the lateral stresses, they can improve the indirect retention and they can illuminate the food impaction areas in the partial denture. Another thing is your occlusion, occlusion should be um, harmonious occlusion and there should not be any premature contact. Uh, your minor connectors should be rigid and they should be positioned in such a manner that they can uh, provide uh, comfort, cleanliness and placement of your artificial space, teeth so that you have enough space, your minor connector should be designed in such a way. Your artificial teeth which you are giving on the uh, over the minor connector in the denture base region, uh, 
you should have fewer teeth and you should reduce the buccolingual width so that you reduce the amount of force on the edentulous stretch although uh, in in class 3 situation it is not much of a problem because uh, it is bounded by teeth on both the sides uh, your denture base should be designed uh, so that they do not interfere with any movement of the surrounding tissues they should be closely adapted and uh, they should be accurately fitting other other uh, other than that they should be highly polished so that they don't invite plaque accumulation another another thing as i just told you uh, this will all help in uh, better neuromuscular control of the patient apart from this uh, your anatomic impression would be enough in a class 3 situation a functional impression is not usually required in such type of cases next we come to class 4 kennedy's class 4 situation a kennedy's class 4 situation is an in anterior edentulous space which crosses the midline as you can see in this figure you have an edentulous space which is crossing the midline now the uh, longer the edentulous span the more the amount of uh, leverage forces on the partial dentures so we need to keep in mind that as far as possible we should preserve as many teeth as possible especially in the anterior region uh here what we need to see is the longer uh, as i just mentioned longer the span of the ridge it is more of a distal extension situation than a uh, class 3 situation so uh whenever we are placing the teeth we should always uh, remember that we need to preserve the labial alveolar process and uh, whenever we are placing the teeth if you are having lot of resorption in the anterior region then chances are that you will be placing the teeth uh, which will not be directly on the residual ridge but slightly anterior to the ridge and this will uh, basically have more of the leverage forces on the denture and uh, which is not good for the partial denture so as much as possible you should try and keep your teeth arrangement on the residual ridge because that is the natural position of the tooth your uh, uh, your distal abutments like these here they should be uh, having direct retainers at the same time uh, you should maintain the quadrilateral configuration if you see here you are giving a clasp as far as posti posterior as possible and in this situation they are also acting as a indirect retainer so uh, this is in order to have a better mechanical advantage and better prognosis of the processes your major connector should be rigid without doubt and you should have a broad coverage uh, and you should take help from the palate you should have a broad palatal coverage in a class 4 situation because that will help in having a better support stabilization and also helps in retention your minor connectors are uh, your rigid rigid connectors another thing is they should not impinge on the gingival tissues your class should be such that they meet the aesthetic requirement you can give a bar class pair or a rpi system uh, depending on the aesthetic requirement as i told you uh, the indirect retainers they should be as far as possible so here you are giving a quadrilateral configuration you preserve that another thing is if your edentulous space is bigger it's it's a large edentulous area then in those cases you have to make an functional impression only the anatomic impression is not going to uh, suffice so you need to have a Uh, you need to make a functional impression your occlusal requirements are same your denture base requirements are similar to your class 3 situation so this is it this, then we come to end of our presentation thank you for watching the video